So as I explained in class, uh, what I'm going to demonstrate are the post fluoroscopy or overhead positions, projections for both the esophagram and the upper GI. The esophagram exam has three positions, projections. You'll perform for that exam the AP, the RAO, and the right lateral. Oh, look. For every single one of these, every single one of these for both the esophagram and the upper GI, the IR size will be 14 by 17, and the orientation will be lengthwise. And we're going to put our <coughs> IR in the bucket tray. And remember, you've got to have it seated in there snugly so that you have a correct readout on your collimator. We're going to bring our tube over to transverse detent. And we're using the table bucky so we know we don't need to concern ourselves with longitudinal detent. A couple of things that we're going to do for the esophagram projections before we close the bucket tray. One, for all of these positions, projections, we're going to center at the level of T6, which is three inches below the jugular notch. But here's the trick. If you start out with your IR, the top of your IR, approximately two inches above the shoulders and then you center your tube to your bucky, you'll be centered a T6. So you want to do that before you close the bucky tray. The other thing that you'll want to do before you close the bucky tray and start positioning and centering is place your marker on the IR. <coughs> what is the collimation width on all of these? It's about like six inches. Six inches. Thank you. So for all of these esophagram projections, the width of your collimation field is going to be six inches. You know that you have to place the marker within the collimation field. So if we're collimating to six inches, how do we know where to place our marker so that it will show up in the image? And, and this works for the esophagram and any other exam where you need to place your marker not at the outer edge of the IR. Okay, so here's your 14 by 17 inch IR. This dimension all the way across, we know, is 14 inches. So let's say this is the center of your IR. Then this is your six inch collimation. So this is six inches of light. This is the center of your IR. So from the center, either way, is three inches. So if you place your marker three inches away from the center of the IR, your marker will still be in the collimation field. And you know what three inches is because you've all figured out with your fingers what your three inches is. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put my marker right there. And your marker is placed superiorly within the collimation field. Close my bucky tray all the way. I'm gonna raise my tube. 
table. Comfortable height. Make sure that my tube and lucky are aligned. I'm going to set my SID. We know that we want our SID to be 40 inches. But with this equipment, we either have to have a 40.2 readout or a 39.8 because it won't register right at 40. Okay. So for the AP, we're centering in midline. <clears throat> we want to make sure that our patient is straight on the table, all the way down and centered on the table. We already center at T6, basically when we made sure that the IR was two inches above the top of the shoulders. But you should know that you're, we're measuring at T6, which is about three inches below the jugular notch. <clears throat> so you don't have to center up and down now. <clears throat> For the AP, just make sure that you're centered in midline. And we collimate to six inches. And you know it's six inches because of the readout. It says cross six. That's six inches across. Now then, we want to move the corner of the, of the pillow up to make room for this cup of barium. And sir, I want you to just hold that cup of barium. And there's a straw in there. Don't you see that? The straw? Yeah, okay. Just keep your head straight. There you go. Just turn your head to the side. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to give you some instructions. When I go back here, I'm going to tell you to start drinking, and I want you to keep drinking the barium until I tell you to stop. Start drinking. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Exposure. You can stop drinking. <clears throat> Next is the R. So, sir, I want you to roll over onto your belly. Be careful and don't hit your head. So he just went from supine to prone. So his right side's over here now. So we have to switch the marker so that it's marking the right side of our patient. And we've got to check to make sure uh, where the IR is now in relation to the top of the shoulder. Because when he rolled over, maybe he changed position. And darn if he didn't. I'm not that even. So I need to make sure, I need to check that to make sure that the top of the IR is at the top of the shoulder, uh, two inches above the top of the shoulder. RAO. <clears throat> okay, so in the RAO position, the right arm is always going to be down alongside of the patient. I want you to flex this left arm. And I want you to flex this left knee, bring this knee up, okay? I want my patient to be rotated 35 to 40 degrees. Now, you want to make sure, too, that the shoulders are rotated the same degree as the hips. Now, I think his hips are rotated more than his shoulders, so I can control that. So I just grab his knee. I don't have to grab anyone behind. Just grab his knee and bring that shoulder, that, uh, those hips down. I'm going to come to the head of the table. You still want him straight on the table because remember your esophagus is about a 10 inch long tube and you have to make sure that on your image you get that area where the esophagus meets the stomach. So he's not straight on the table. His esophagus starts here, and by the time it reaches the stomach, it's over toward this side of the table. So sir, I just want you to scoot your hips forward on the table. And you can judge that by palpating the spine. Okay. Where that head. 
and you want to lose it. So I moved my, uh, my uh, Bucky, did I not? Because I, I needed to reposition the Bucky so that the top of the IR was two inches above the shoulders. <clears throat> So I've got to make sure that my tube and bucky are still aligned. You can actually, you can do that too by not moving your bucky. You can do it by moving the table instead of moving the bucky. So now I'm going to locate the spine and I'm going to center two inches lateral from midline. I'm centering two inches away from the mid sagittal plane toward the elevated side, toward the patient's left side. I'm culminating again to six inches. I'm going to give you this yummy cup of barium again, sir. And again, I've got the corner of the pillow moved up a little bit. I want to make sure that there's room for the cup there. I'm going to give you those instructions again. Start drinking. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Exposure. Let me stop drinking. Right side. I want the flex, the uh, knees flexed for stability. Bring your arms up, kind of like you're praying. Again, we want to make sure that our patient is straight on the table. And centered on the table. Please move your hips forward, sir. There you go. You want to bring this bottom shoulder back a little bit. You want to visualize those uh, humeral heads superimposed one over the other. Same with the femoral heads. So those hips need to be in a true lateral, and the shoulders do as well check to make sure that our IR is still two inches above the shoulders, and it is. And now we're centering the mid-coronal plane. And we will collimate to six inches. Now, people have noticed that is not six inches. That light is much less than six inches. Well, by the time that light diverges and hits the IR, it's six inches wide. But because his body is so close to the source, it makes the light appear smaller. But that light field spreads out as it travels. I'm going to give you that cup again. I'm going to give you those instructions. You need to keep those arms up high. Okay, big gulp, sir. Start drinking. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Exposure. You may stop drinking. 